In this program, I want to take a little closer look at the nature of the complex ions that our transition metals form. In our last program, I introduced this complex ion, copper ion in the center with water molecules surrounding. And you might recall that what creates the bond is the electrostatic attraction that our substances on the outside by donating pairs of electrons towards that central positively charged atom, and we called this the coordinate bond. These substances that attract themselves to these positively charged ions in the center, these are referred to as ligands. So in this case, my water molecule acts as a ligand. Ligands essentially are identified as molecules or ions that can donate pairs of electrons. We'll take a little bit closer look at what substances that can do that. Now, as I mentioned, the general formula then of our, our ligand then is some sort of transition metal in the center that has some sort of positive charge associated with it. And then we have, by means of the coordinate bond, a host of ligands that can then attract towards it. Now, in some of these complex molecules, some of these ligands may be different. So this could perhaps be water molecules, and L prime might be something like ammonia molecules. They don't all have to be the same. In this next example, I want to take a look at identifying uh, what the ligand is in this and the charge that exists on our chromium. So again, the complex ion is located in the square brackets and that chromium would be located at the center. Now, uh, attaching to it then are six water molecules. These chlorines are attached to this ion. So this species would have six water molecules. So water is acting as the ligand in this particular complex ion. Chlorine is acting as an anion that's being attracted to this positively charged species. So chromium has a certain oxidation state and I want to determine what that is. I'm going to let that be X. I have attached to that six water molecules. Now, the charge on a water molecule, well, it's neutral, would be zero. And I also have three chlorines here at the end, and each the charge on those is minus one, and the charge on this overall species is zero. So I can see here that in this particular substance that the chromium is using a, has a three plus charge, or a plus three oxidation state. Let's take a look at a, another group of uh, complex ions and something called the coordination number. We define the coordination number as really the number of coordinate bonds that form. So in this particular species, the silver would be at the center, AG and I would have two ammonias donating their electrons. This then would form, tend to form what we would call a linear arrangement. Cobalt here with four chlorines attached to it would probably arrange itself in something like a tetrahedral like shape with each chlorine minus here on the outside. Now if I replace chlorine with a larger species, say like ammonia or water, it is also possible to form square shapes. So when you tend to have four ligands attached in the center, um, it'll either form a tetrahedral or a square shape. Generally, as I say, square shapes tend to be with larger species. And finally, here in my last one, this chromium has attached to it six water molecules. 
and this tends to form an octahedral. So these tend to be the more common shapes that we find in our complex ions. Now, let's take a little bit closer how ligands can be divided. First of all, we have what are called monodont donate ligands. These species tend to have one donor atom or ion present in our molecule. So, for instance, when we look at water, we have two bonded hydrogens. And although we have two lone pairs of electrons, water is capable of donating one of those pairs and hence would fall into this category. Another species that does this is ammonia. Ammonia with its three bonded hydrogens. And it would have one unbonded pair of electrons that it could also tend to donate. Carbon monoxide tends to donate this pair of electrons. So we have molecules that are capable of donating pairs of electrons. Other species that do this are actually ions themselves. So a chlorine ion has the capability of donating a one pair and other members of chlorine's family. Bromine would also behave in a similar fashion, capable of donating one pair of electrons. Polydinate ligands have more than one uh, donor atom or ion. Down here at this particular species, the ethane diode um, uh, ion, if we look more closely at these oxygens, there would be present six unbonded electrons. These are capable, if I have a metal species with some sort of positive charge, this one single molecule is capable of donating two pairs of electrons. Likewise, this molecule, ethane diamine, can do the same. Now, I'm going to redraw this one slightly. Instead of having this bond down here, I'm going to bend it up here. So I'm going to have my nitrogen here with my two hydrogens attached. You might recall that nitrogen is going to have an unbonded pair of electrons, as will this one. And again, my metal is capable of bonding twice within the same molecule, and hence these are called polydentate, uh, polydentate ligands. Um, one last thing I'd like to show you about this one, let's look more closely at this ethane diamine for a moment. So carbon um, with two hydrogens coming off it, and then my nitrogens, two hydrogens coming off it, and they each have a pair of electrons which are capable of bonding with my metal that be in the center. I'm going to bring along a second ethane diamine molecule in a similar fashion from the top side here. And it's got electrons there and there. So what I have here is a coordination number of four. That would be the coordination number of four. Yet if you look at the formula of this, so if I have my metal, um, that metal is bonded to ethane diamine, which I'll use for short, but it's only bonded to two of them, yet we have four as the coordination number. So it's not automatic that this number corresponds to the coordination number. In the case of polydentate ligands, you have to pay a little bit more attention to their structure. And then this would possess some sort of positive charge depending on my metal. Anyway, that's a quick look at the, the nature of the complex ions. In our final program, we'll take a look at the colors that these possess. Thanks for watching.